Chapter 15 The Striking Cobra-Like Penis Monster Thing The old, sodium lamps were already too dim for the gravel parking lot. The flickering, stuttering yellow light waxed and waned, giving Chuck's eyes no chance to adjust to the darkness. As the drunken hooligans attacked, the lights repeatedly plunged the lot into total darkness, making Chuck rely on quick flashes of light and the constant crunching of gravel to know where the next attack was coming from. He felt Justine by his side, their arms brushing in the darkness. He wondered if this was perhaps the pacifist's penance for accidentally killing a man in Africa a decade earlier. A cosmic ironic twist, for sure. And although Chuck was peaceful by nature, that didn't mean he wasn't above throwing down to defend his friends. He had killed a man, after all. Gravel crunched in a flurry of unseen activity. As the asshole swarmed, Chuck lost sight of Richard. Yellow light flashed, and Justine grabbed his arm, pointing. Gun! She hissed. One of the assholes was reaching for a strapped handgun, and Chuck knew if the guy got it free, the fight would be over before it even started. Without a second thought, Chuck dropped his chin and threw himself into a bum rush as the fucker unholstered his weapon. Richard was distantly aware of Chuck slamming into one of the hecklers. Oh hey, it was the one who jumped on stage! And Justine chasing after to help him. He was only passively aware of the poor lighting, and with Chuck and Justine handling the one brawler, he was even less aware of the seven-to-one odds he now faced. The only thing Richard was fully aware of was that he had never felt so powerful. The monster cock exploded up from the waistband of his pants. Like earlier in his bathroom, it grew to impossible lengths, rapidly coiling while in constant motion around his arms and legs. Richard couldn't tell if the monster cock was guiding his movements or if he was guiding the cock. They worked together in a kind of seamless symbiosis, seeking out attackers like one of Vector Defense's missiles, and striking like, well, a goddamn cobra. Suck my cock, faggot! Richard squinted dramatically in the darkness, not that anyone saw, and growled a snappy response. You first, motherfucker. That voiceless whisper in Richard's head told him to duck, and he dropped backward while throwing a cock-coiled hand behind him to brace his fall. Almost instantly, the coil sprung, pushing him back up. His fist launched forward, and the monster cock slither-snapped around his arm, supercharging Richard's punch. At the last second, the head of the monster cock slipped in front of Richard's fist, absorbing the force of the blow. The cock head rammed into the attacker's head, sending a red hat flying in the darkness. The dude spun a complete 360 before collapsing to the gravel. Richard stared at his balled-up fist, the monster cock twisting its coils around his arm and throbbing with anticipation. The corner of Richard's mouth lifted. Groovy. There was a flickering flash of yellow before the lot once again plunged into darkness. Three more red hats bellowed in a drunken rage before piling onto Richard. Chuck couldn't stop thinking about Africa as he struggled to get on top of the asshole pulling at the gun. Justine dropped her whole body on the red hat's other arm, and still the fucker was squirming under them with a kind of drunken super strength. Yes, Chuck felt he needed to alleviate his guilt about Africa and the innocent good guy native. 
His soul needed something to balance the scales. And this red-hatted fucker, he was definitely a bad guy. On the other hand, maybe if Chuck could forgive the red hat for bringing a firearm to a bar, heckling, and attacking him and his friends, perhaps that would... Rot in hell, you fat fucking fudge packer! The asshole spat, snapping his teeth at Chuck's face. Chuck grunted in frustration, wondering why this asshole was making it so hard to be a good person. He tightened his fingers around the red hat's wrist and started slamming his hand into the gravel, trying to knock the gun free. Chuck! Justine hissed, sliding side to side as the fucker twisted his arm. Chuck kept slamming the gun hand, wincing as gravel bit into his own fingers. Uh, hang on! Blam! Richard and the monster cock sent two of the attackers flying. Their bodies literally careened through the air, one crashing into a windshield of an old Volvo and the other slamming back first into a telephone pole. Before the bodies even hit the ground, the last two assholes leaped into the fray. Richard spun in a circle as the monster cock twisted around his extremities in a blur, blocking hits and supercharging Richard's own punches and kicks with lightning speed. He had this. Richard fucking had this. An arm suddenly wrapped around Richard's neck, catching the end of his cock shaft in the chokehold and pressing the basketball-sized cock head into Richard's face. In the darkness, the attacker thought the shaft was Richard's arm, not that it mattered, as he squeezed the chokehold as hard as he could. The other red hats pounced, punching furiously at Richard. As stars began exploding across his vision, blam! The chokehold loosened instantly, and the attacker stumbled sideways into gravel, clutching his foot. Richard gasped for air, and the monster cock pulsed with fury. The voiceless whisper screamed in Richard's head, raging against these fucking cunts, these assholes, these stains of useless fucking smegma waiting to be wiped from existence. Richard had no idea what happened next. <laughs> Chuck bellowed and slammed the gun again finally knocking it free of the red hat's grip. It scattered across the gravel, just out of reach. An explosion of pain raced up Chuck's fingers, and his grip on the asshole's wrist loosened. The guy twisted his arm and pulled free, his hand shooting up and latching firmly onto Chuck's throat. Chuck's eyes popped as he gagged. Justine flailed against the psycho's impossible strength, gravel cutting into her knees. I'm a brute of the shit out of you and then ass raped your little girl, you fat fucking faggot! Chuck saw his own personal fireworks show as Justine's struggles faded into the background. Pacifism meant nothing when faced with survival. Forgiveness was not in the cards. With the last bit of strength he could muster, Chuck threw his one and only punch, cracking the Red Hat's jaw and knocking him instantly unconscious. The asshole's grip went limp, and as soon as his hand fell from Chuck's throat, Chuck gasped for fresh air. Justine pushed herself into a kneeling position. Silence pressed against their ears interrupted only by the faint buzz of the flickering light. Richard? Chuck wheezed, climbing to his feet and looking around for his friend. Buddy? Here. Chuck saw him in a silhouetted flash of yellow light. In the darkness, Chuck couldn't see the bulging tentacle retreating into Richard's pants. What he did see, however, were the unconscious bodies of the other drunken brawlers scattered across the gravel lot. Justine grabbed Chuck's hand and stood up, gawking at the damage. What in the hell? 
Chuck rubbed his tender throat as Richard joined his friends. Uh, hey. <clears throat> hey, buddy. Uh, you guys okay? Richard asked. Justine nodded slowly. Chuck stared at his friend with wide-eyed curiosity. I guess we should uh, probably call the cops, Richard said, pulling on his earlobe. Fuck that, and fuck these assholes, Justine scoffed, surprising even herself with an adrenaline-fueled grin. Let's uh, get out of here, yeah? I'll buy you boys a drink, uh, but like, somewhere else, okay? Chuck put his hands up. Uh, hold on, I mean, I gotta ask. He looked from Richard to the scattered bodies, and then back again. Dude, are you Batman?